Hey Toby. Yo, wet baby. Did some swimming. A gloomy day. Toby and Turbo don't seem to mind. They've been in that pool. That swamp monster, he's around here somewhere. It's <laughs> why the patio is stopping wet. That's not from rain. That's from Tur Where did you? Okay. <laughs> he was under the table. How did I not know you were under there? Anyways, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. Great shot of the ground there. I'm great. Look what we got here. Some big boxes scattered around the table because as you just saw, the ground is, it's ground sopping wet. Sopping wet ground and cardboard, not a great combination. I have two boxes here from Proven Winners, <laughs> a third one coming tomorrow. So if it's like bright and sunny or things look different later on the video, that's why. There are a few plants in these boxes that I've been looking forward to. I thought I'd just bring y'all along while I cut these open and have a look at what's inside. Get to look at the packaging and all that fun stuff. There shouldn't be that many. I think there's like one, two, three, four, four maybe six or seven plants. I placed oral a long time ago. I don't really remember. The boxes on both of these are larger than what usually comes. Some of the plants are a little bit bigger too, like some gallon size things. And they did send out an email a couple days ago, letting me know if the shipment was coming out. It came very quickly. It was like two days. Love nice, fast shipping. Okay. All right. Yeah, I know what this is. The whole point there is that in the email, they tell you what's in the packages, but I just, I totally forgot. Use a little bit more space here, but the table's filling up with plants. It's that time of year. Finally got one of those forecasts where it shows no frost. The temperature's going to be in the upper 70s with lows in the 50s, of course have to hit the nurseries and start picking things up so the tables and surfaces are very full. So there's the boxes that were inside of the boxes. They have the little tabs that push out on the inside to help keep the plants from moving around on the inside. That's a feature I very much appreciate when I get plants in the mail because it just lets you know they weren't rocking around and shaking all over the place. I promise the whole video is not going to be about packaging just with this one. You saw it now from now on just show you the plants. Oh it's so cute. Plastic bag wrapped around the pot. What, oh, and it has a string in it. Nifty. Very effective string that held the soil in very well. So I'm going to go ahead and unpack the rest of these and we'll just have a look at what's inside. You get it. You saw the packaging, the bag, and the little tabby things. None of that's as exciting as actually seeing the plants, right? That dog's always just having the best time of his life. No matter what he's doing, it's like the best thing ever. It's the next day, everything has arrived, got all the plants watered and the pots mostly cleaned up. Not all of them. Thought I could fool y'all by sticking this one inside of another container, but yeah, that was wrong. Didn't fit. So that one's still messy. That doesn't matter. We're just here to look at the plants, right? Just about everything I ordered here are plants that are typically sold for like zone seven, eight and up. So they're plants that I don't normally see around at my local nurseries or don't anticipate to see around at my local nurseries from Proven Winners. And I also have some annuals that I'll show here in a moment. To start things off, let's just slide this beauty into frame. It's a Pepe La Palme pomegranate. This one's been around for a while now and I've wanted one for a while now. Look at all those flowers. Isn't that beautiful? So the Pepe La Palme is a pomegranate that stays smaller, has a more compact growth, and I believe gets three to four feet tall and wide. Here's the inside of the tag if you were wondering. Full sun, zone seven and up, three to four feet tall and wide, space from four to five feet apart, blooms during the summer, prune, late winter, early spring, adaptable to most soil and water, fertilize in spring. Yeah, that's, there's all the information. And there's the little description if you wanna pause and have a read with that. I'll talk about it some more though. Pomegranates are a lot of fun to grow. I've tried some of the other dwarf varieties in the past. I was excited to try the Pepe La Palme though because it's supposed to flower abundantly throughout the summertime. I've grown a fair amount of dwarf pomegranates in the past. There are a few varieties that are said to be possibly hardy here in zone six. Haven't had a lot of luck with that. I'm not going to try and overwinter this one outdoors. I'll take it inside during the winter time. Uh, Pepe La Palme is supposed to be a very profuse bloomer. That's why I wanted this one. Just loads and loads of tiny little bright orange flowers that'll dangle around from the foliage in there. The fruit from what I understand, not necessarily that tasty, but you could eat it. I got this more for the ornamental aspect, so that's not something I'm all that concerned with. These bloom on new wood and they should respond well to pruning. Pomegranate, love a pomegranate. And then next up, I have a couple of gardenias here. These are the steady as she goes gardenias, which is Gardenia jasminoides Prince Charles is the cultivar. If you want to be able to dig in and get a lot more information, I'll hopefully have that up there on the screen for you. One small little flower getting ready to pop open there. It's kind of overexposed. Hopefully you can see it. And these are both absolutely just loaded 
with buds on them. There are a few reasons that I wanted to try out the Steady As She Goes. For one, it's supposed to have improved heat tolerance, disease resistance, and it's supposed to be one that will flower continually throughout the probably late spring, summer, and maybe early fall. They have a lovely double flower, which yeah, it's not open yet, but imagine it'll look like a double flowered gardenia. Three to five feet tall, and what did that say? Four to seven feet wide. And there's the tag again, if you wanna pause and have a look at it. It's also supposed to be more heat tolerant, which is very nice with the gardenias. I mean, a lot of gardenias can take some heat. The hotter, more humid it gets, if they're in full blazing sun, I usually have some struggles with them if they don't get some afternoon shade. I think that's partially because of all the pavement that's out here in the backyard, though. But imagine the whole point there with the heat tolerance is the heat tolerance plus the disease resistance, and then it being hardy and one that should continue blooming throughout the summertime just makes it one that I was very drawn to. There are a few varieties of gardenias that are hardy here in zone six. The climb's hardy and there's one that's called like snow something. I can't even remember. I've tried a few, haven't had the best of luck with them outdoors. Typically I have to overwinter them, kind of like I would in Akuba, which is another marginally hardy plant here in zone six. I plan on potentially trying one of these in the ground and then having one to take inside during the winter time. The double flower with all the other good stuff plus that cold tolerance really made me want to try these out. So I'm really, really, really looking forward to seeing how these go. I may go ahead and allow them to grow out for another year or so before even trying them in the ground. As you can see, these aren't the largest of plants and typically when it comes to testing the limits when it comes to cold hardiness. It's usually better to go bigger. Sometimes they can be pest magnets during the winter time in the house. That's something that I don't love about them as far as growing them as house plants and getting the right light for them can be a little bit tricky too. And they're one of those plants that tend to throw a fit when you boom them in the house and they'll drop some leaves and just kind of blech, not look that happy, but that's all right. Then they're done that. They should be fine in the winter time. Look at that. Austin Pretty Limits Oleander. I did get a few of these last year. They were in much smaller containers and this was more just a thing of impatience. <laughs> and since I saw that they were offering it in a larger eight inch pot, I thought it would be nice to go ahead and just get one that's larger and we'll do some more flowering this year. We used to have the other ones. This was just kind of an instant gratification sort of thing. I love oleanders. They just, they have a nice shape to them. Usually they are very prolific bloomers. The reason I was drawn to the Austin Pretty Limits, or the reason I am drawn to it, is because it's supposed to be more compact with a nice shape to it, and it should be a profuse bloomer as well. This is four to six feet tall. It's a zone eight and south, zone eight and warmer on this one. I've overwintered a few oleanders out here before with a lot of mulch on top of them, and they've come back, but usually just get like three growths out of them, maybe get 18 to 24 inches tall. The juice isn't worth the squeeze there for me to, to attempt to test the cold hardiness on that one, especially when they're so easy to overwinter in the house. They do have a higher level of toxicity in them, so it's a smart one to make sure to keep it away from curious mouths. I think that just about everything here is technically somewhat toxic to uh, pets. So uh, maybe we'll just, as a blanket statement, say, I don't think anything here is safe to eat. The pomegranates, I get mixed information on as to whether or not they're safe uh, as far as like the foliage and the wood goes on the plant. Chiclet orange Esperanza. This is a Tacoma. You see those beautiful orange trumpet shaped flowers, which is what we would expect on a trumpet bush, right? I do have a good amount of the native trumpet vines growing out here in my backyard, but they tend to have a somewhat short blooming season on them. And these are plants that hummingbirds and pollinators just love. So I wanted to grab one of these, particularly the chiclet orange. I see the Tacoma just in general, the trumpet bushes that are, I think, zone eight and up, the ones that aren't hardy here. I see them for sale fairly often, but they're the types that get much larger and uh, tend to get sort of a weedy looking appearance to them. The chiclet orange is supposed to maintain a smaller size. I forgot, I'm, I'm not gonna show every single tag here. For the ones that maybe have some nuance to them, I will try and put them up here so you can pause it and read off the tag. It's a zone eight and up. Get bold summer all summer long, even when it really heats up with chiclet orange Esperanza. Bright orange trumpet shaped flowers cover the small space saving tree. Uh, all right, I got distracted by the dog in the background. Sorry about that. There it is. It'll stay smaller. It's a profuse bloomer. Being smaller is nice because this is zone eight and warmer. I think I said zone eight and up before. Shouldn't that be zone eight and set? You get it. The flowers on this, I think, look very similar to the trumpet vines that I have out here in my backyard. Actually, maybe a little bit smaller, which would make sense because the plant stays smaller. 
that compactness though is going to make this plant much 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 easier to overwinter. I would more than likely overwinter this plant similar to how I would like a lantana or even the pomegranate and the oleander where I would place them someplace that's nice and bright, somewhat cool if possible, and I would not water it the same indoors as I would outdoors. It's almost like I would somewhat let it have a dormancy, but not quite. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's have a look at some of the smaller plants here. This is a plant that I've talked about on this channel a lot. It's a mandevillus, one of the sun parasol varieties that's called apricot. I got one at a plant haul not too long ago. Maybe you saw it in the garden tour. It had some damage on it from an unexpected cold snap. I had ordered this one after I repotted the one that I was trying to overwinter last year when I got the new heater and I accidentally cooked it. So I was thinking, okay, well, I don't know if I'll see it around at the nurseries in the spring. So since it was online, when I placed this order back in like, I don't know, January, went ahead and added it to the cart just in case. So I'm glad I have that backup because the one of them got cooked by the new heater when I was learning how to get all the settings right and everything on it. And then the new one got killed back by a random cold snap. I and mean, it's not dead, but it doesn't look very good. Okay, you probably didn't need all that background. My apologies. It's Amanda Villa, although I think Suntory, who are the people who have hybridized this mandevilla, I think that they have this listed more as a diplodinia. It's supposed to have good branching on it and have those beautiful apricot colored flowers. They're a very yellowy orange, light orange, you know, apricot <laughs> colored flower. But according to Sun Tory, from what I had read, that they do need to be trained to climb. So it's, I don't think it's like within their nature to climb. You kind of have to give them a hand. Which I kind of recall with the one that I had out here last year as well. Beautiful vine. I'm excited about it. This right here. Can you see that? Monarch's Banquet Asclepius. One of the Curse of Archetype Asclepius, which are usually called the tropical milkweeds. I usually see these listed as hardies for zone seven and up. Sometimes conservative websites will say zone eight. I've overwintered these just fine in zone six and had them come back for me in warm spots. Like if you have a good little microclimate, and sometimes they will come back. The only reason I mention that, I don't know if you'll even be able to see that, but it's because this tag on here says it's for zone nine and up. So I don't know if it being variegated, which I hadn't even pointed out yet, if you haven't noticed, it's a variegated tropical milkweed. I don't know if that variegation takes away from the cold hardiness in the plant or if it just is a, them being conservative. I'm not really sure, but I'm just looking at it. That's the only reason I want it. It's just a pretty looking plant. It, the variegation on it isn't loud. I did get two of them. I should show you both of them. My apologies. The variegation on these is soft. It's not loud and it's not extreme. And I think that it goes really nicely, not just with the flowers, but with the flower buds. Oh, it's getting very windy. Variegated plants are plants that I am uh, somewhat hesitant with. Sometimes the variegation can be really extreme and loud. Sometimes there can be a need for that. It depends on what you're doing outside. But with something like the Asclepius, I wouldn't want it to be too loud. I think the variegation on these is very subtle. Some different shades of green has a light creamy somewhat yellow outline on the leaf and even some hints of pink in there it's going to be harder to see you can kind of see that right what about the b cam can we see it better over there kind of sort of yeah just got it because i think they're pretty i have a lot of different milkweeds that i grow out here so i thought that it would be fun to give that variegated variety a try just to mix things up a little bit i actually have another <laughs> variegated asclepius here that i picked up from a local nursery this one is called Asclepius Monarch Promise. The variegation does look a little bit more intense. There's some more white in there. That could just be a difference in the plants though. That doesn't necessarily mean really much of anything. The tag on this one says zones 10 and up, whereas those say nine. So yeah, maybe having the variegation in there does cut back on the cold hardiness. I'm not sure. These are fun and pretty. Really enjoying to see how those grow up. The Everything on them should be, I would think, about the same for a curse of vodka type. I believe it would be like 20 to 36 inches high. They'll have sort of a like vasey shape coming up on them. And these were listed as an online exclusive. So I don't think it's one that will be seen around at the nurseries. They have to order that one online. So I assume that's what online exclusive means, right? I mean, that's what you would think. It's a beautiful day and people are outside with the lawnmowers. Pardon the background noise. This is a diamantina coral orange sunrise diplodinia. And look at those flowers. Isn't that beautiful? I was going to spend some time describing it, but you can just see it right there in the picture. It's a very, very, very pretty flower on this Diplodinia. Should be standard Diplodinia care with this one. I don't think there would be anything all that unique with it, other than I believe this one is supposed to have some really good branching. This one is supposed to be an earlier bloomer, one of the ones that's supposed to get going a little bit sooner in the season. It was just that orangey coral flower. Isn't that just 
fantastic. A very nice tropical looking plant, 12 to 60 inches tall, full sun, should be fine in part sun. Most diplodinia do fine with part sun. Should be able to keep it pruned into a nice little diplodinia shape or train it up a pole or a trellis, something like that. And itself looks pretty good, has a nice amount of new growth getting ready to come out from right in there. And hopefully sometime, not too far off in the future, we'll get to see some flowers on it. <laughs> okay, and now this is this is the last of it. Let's see if I can squeeze that into frame. But these were all in the package that came yesterday. They were all packaged, very similar to how the other plants were put together in the box. Everything came out looking nice. They've all been watered. These are Super Tunia. Come on, camera. Come on, you can do it. Super Tunia Vista Jazzberries. Love the Vista series with the Super Tunias. And see, they have a nice purpley pink kind of color on them. I do hope that these end up being more pink than purple as they start to grow. If not, that's okay, because I still think it's a lovely shade of purple. I was hoping for something more pink. Like if you see the tag, got it. I mean, we got it. That's not, not quite the same, not that far off, but not, this is more what I was hoping for. We will see what happens with those. Size and temperature and even soil can have a big influence on what the flowers look like. I'm sure they will still be beautiful. And then here I have just a couple of the Supertunia Mini Vista Indigos, a smaller Vista. They only get six to 12 inches around. They have lovely purple flowers. Hopefully they'll be lighter in color as those age out because I was hoping for a lighter purple with those. I really like the compactness with this one. That was the reason. You know, the vistas tend to get very, very big and they will cover the sides of the pottery, which is one of the reasons that they're fantastic. But having something that's not going to cover the pots that I think are really, really pretty, something that will just kind of come over the edge and still be able to see some of the nice pottery. You get the best of both worlds. You get the flowers and you don't have to cover up the pottery. That's what those are for. Part of the sloppiness, <laughs> there's some storms rolling and it's that time of year where Kind of got a film between the spring storms. That's everything. Like I said, pretty much everything I ordered were just things that I wouldn't have anticipated seeing in the nurseries around here, so needed to get them online or plants like the Vista Jazzberries down here where I really like them. And, uh, you know, if the plant rushes and plant craze, things are selling out really fast. I just thought, you know, I'll just go ahead and order a whole bunch of those. The Super Tunia Vistas, usually I can find them at the nurseries, but not always. You know, plants sell pretty quickly, so it was just sort of a peace of mind. I was like, I want them, I'm just gonna order them online and not have to bounce from place to place to place to try and find them. Really looking forward to seeing how things take off and get growing this season. Hopefully gonna have lots of flowers on the pomegranate and on that oleander, that uh, the, <laughs> the chiclet orange Tacoma. Yeah, this one up here in the corner with the pretty orange flowers. Should flower all season long. Same with, well really, I think most of the plants here should flower all season long. So just lots and lots and lots of color here to enjoy. Comment down below, say hi. Some fun plants, new plants y'all are looking forward to this year. Just some fun things you're trying to get your hands on. Interesting varieties of the plants that are out here. And I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life. And everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye